Welcome to the top custom Hearthstone cards of the week, where I take a look at the most interesting and creative cards posted to the custom Hearthstone subreddit. And first up, we have Combustion Combinator, which is a three mana, three, two mage minion, which has battle cry, discover three different player spells, combine them into one 10 mana spell. And I will say right off the bat, I think this is such a strong and unique effect that th this is probably more suited to a legendary card versus just an epic, you know, especially considering this is something that could just potentially end the game. So having two copies of it in your deck might be a little bit too strong. I've talked a bit in some previous videos about how I really like win conditions that your opponent is aware of and can see coming because it gives them the opportunity to play around it or at least prepare for it. And this is an example of that, right? Where you play this and your opponent knows you have a potential 10 mana game ending spell in your hand waiting. And obviously the dream in wild would be to hit three pyroblasts with this, you know, a 10 mana deal 30 damage. Although I do think this might be too strong for standard. There's currently only eight spells with the fire type in standard and one of which is Sunset Volley, which is could be a Pyroblast essentially. So I think the odds of just hitting two or three Sunset Volleys is just too high. And there's really not really any bad picks in the current pool outside of outside of maybe Flame Geyser. But I feel like on average, this spell would probably deal 20 damage to your opponent's face and then some kind of side benefit, either summoning a six cost minion or wiping their board or giving you some random spells. So in summary, I think this card's a super cool design. I think it should be a legendary, especially the more I've thought about it and the more I've looked into the possible spells you could discover. And as I mentioned, I think it's just too strong in the current standard environment. Maybe later on, maybe towards the end of rotation when there's more cards and more options. But I think if you were to slot this into standard as it is right now, it would just be too powerful. Next up, we have Weapons Tester. It is a two mana, two, three warrior minion with battle cry, give your weapon to your opponent to gain eight armor and draw a card. And I'm sure the first thing you thought of when you read this card was the first thing I thought of when I read this card, and that is Cursed Blade. You know, Cursed Blade is a terrible weapon, and to my knowledge, never really saw any kind of play, even in some kind of combo deck. But this can enable that, right? Imagine playing Cursed Blade on one and then giving it to your opponent on turn two, or perhaps even saving it for a late game combo. You know, you could essentially pay three mana in the late game to give your opponent Cursed Blade and follow up with some kind of damage effect to kill them from that point. But ignoring the potential Cursed Blade shenanigans, I do think this is an interesting card. Say you give your opponent a weapon with one charge left, it's probably gonna be a two or three damage weapon. Either they kill the minion with the weapon, so you essentially pay two mana for eight armor and to draw a card or they hit your face and you got shield block on a body essentially but i think this is a really neat design and i'd like to see it in the game if anything just for the cursed blade combos potentially but is there any other combos you can think of with this card let me know in the comments for the third card we have nom nom the ravished it is a seven mana seven seven legendary warlock minion with battle cry destroy seven minions and that's it pretty simple clean design you know, it's very similar to, say, Soul Stealer in the sense that it's potentially a board clear on a body. But one thing to keep in mind is that this does hit friendly minions as well. So if you have a board with three minions and your opponent has four minions, it'll just kill your minions as well as theirs. So if you're playing this in a, in a deck that's very slow and not really playing minions, it can kind of be like a twisting nether on a body. But if you're playing minions yourself, and especially the more minions on the board, the worse it is for you, this could backfire a bit as well. But do you think this is too fair, too slow? I saw the comments on Reddit were very divided on this card, so let me know. For the next card, we have another mistake. It is a one mana, one three neutral minion with battle cry, upgrade your hero power after three uses, swap it back. And it also has the all minion tag as well for what it's worth. And I will say right off the bat, I think the name is very fitting that I, I think this card's a mistake. I think it's just way too strong at one mana. I think it's a cool effect. I think it's a cool idea. Just it would have to be either worsely statted or higher costed or both. You know, for a lot of the classes, this is essentially a one mana, one three that deals three damage. But then you say warrior, right? This is a one mana, one three gain six armor, essentially. Or Warlock, this is a one mana, one three, restore six life to your hero. So in comparison to other commonly played one drops, this is very, very strong. And like I said, I like the effect. I think it would just have to be a much higher mana cost. So in summary, the card text is cool, cost is bad, stats are bad. 
change those up and we're cooking something. And the next card is Faulty Miner. It is a three mana, three, four neutral minion with battle cry excavate twice, but they cost one more. And I have pretty similar feelings with this card to the last card where I think the effect is very good, but very strong, especially for the stats and the cost. So I like the route they're going with this card. I would like to see a card similar to this, but I think it would have to be higher costed or worse statted. And while reading through the comments on Reddit, I did see someone suggest that this excavates two treasures of the same tier, but then someone else pointed out that imagine playing this and getting two legendary treasures. So I think that that option would just be too strong. But I absolutely love the excavate keyword. So I'm a little biased here. But as I mentioned, I think it's just a little too strong for the cost and the stats. But let me know what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? How would you balance this card? Last up, I think this is the coolest card I've seen since I started doing these videos. It is Sangara Tetherblood. It is a six mana five five legendary death knight minion with battle cry for the rest of the game. Fatal damage won't kill your hero until the end of your turn. And it also has a three blood room requirement as well. And this is a super cool effect. I've talked numerous times on stream about how I think there's such so much design space in the blood death knight area that should be that could be explored. For example, Mograine gives you the effect that at the end of your turn, you deal three damage to your opponent. And I remember reading at one point that apparently the original design was that it would steal three health from your opponent. And while I agree that is too strong, I think that is such a cool route to potentially take. I think they should explore the idea of increasing your health and lowering your opponent's health more in the game. And while this card isn't that exact idea, I think it's a step in the right direction. I think that this effect would just fit into Blood Death Knight so well, and it's so unique. So basically how it would work is if your opponent killed you, you know, say you went negative three health, right? The turn would still pass back to you and you wouldn't die until the end of your turn. So it essentially gives you a turn to try and heal or restore back health above zero, which might sound overpowered, but if you think about it, right, every time you use this and you stay alive an extra turn you're using resources you're using healing cards and if you know if you're spending every turn just healing yourself back up your opponent's building up a bigger board they're going to start hitting you for 15 20 damage right it, to a point where you're just not going to be able to recuperate the next turn so while i do think that this would keep you alive you know at a couple extra turns i don't think it's anything game breaking or oh, super overpowered but as I said, I think there's so much potential design space available in the Blood Death Knight area that I really wish they'd explore more. That'll be all for this week. Let me know in the comments, what was your favorite card of the week? What card could you actually see being added to the game? And if you enjoyed it, give it a like and I'll see you next week.